What must it really change? <laughs> us. Us. It must change us first. We do the prayer through our consciousness to change us. To change us. Because I want to be very, very clear here that if you think that your prayer is for the purpose of getting God to do things for you, you are pretty much mistaken there. Pretty much mistaken. No prayer, no matter how fervently or how often it is prayed, will influence God to be more or less than God already is. God is already abundance, perfection, limitless. All of those qualities, God is already that. And that, that nature is what we have been created out of. So that essence of God is the truth of who we are. We're full of so much that we don't even know it because we haven't gone within. And prayer brings us within. It consciously, is a, prayer is an activity. It is a total activity because we are really going within and actively shifting our awareness, connecting with the higher vibration of God and God is love. That all the religions say, God is love. God is goodness. So, no matter how much prayer that you do, you're not going to change God. God already is. So the great objective in prayer is to be still and to know that God is all life and is in all life and is in each and every one of us. That this is the substance, the intelligence, the abundance, the limitlessness, the allness of life itself, and we possess it. We possess it. Do we realize we are powerful beings because we possess this power within us to create our experiences how we would like them to be? How? Let the fear move the fear. Move through it anyway. With the fear can pop up, move through it anyway. Joe let the fear pop up, and he got up and he shared, and he has helped many people in this room. I know that. Just by moving through the fear. It's the only way you can transform fear, is to be in it and move through it to the other side. Hmm. So with prayer, we get to know the God is is so much more than anything that we could ever comprehend. We are all expressions of this oneness. We then open our hearts rather than beg life to be good, for God to bring good into our lives. We open our hearts and we feel and sense and accept that life is like the sun, that this light is shining through us. And the shadows might be there, but but the light is shining through us, and it will dissolve the shadows the same, the same way that the sun is always shining on a very cloudy day. And it looks like the sun's not out. The sun is out. The sun is always shining. The light within us is always radiating. That's for us to remember, even when we go through those, those dark days, to know that the light is still shining, even though we might not be able to see it at that given moment. We proclaim statements of spiritual truth in, in prayer, the good, the positive. We affirm that we are now successful, that we are now prosperous, that we are now filled with wholeness, that we are filled with the peace of God, that we are transforming and renewing our minds. And then we solidify our belief that what we just said is true by moving into that attitude of gratitude, into thanksgiving. And then we let it go, we release it. So spiritual mind treatment, which is something Ernest Holmes created, is based on those five steps. And I'm just going to real quickly go through the five steps. First step is recognizing that there is a power so much greater than we could ever imagine. This power for good. This is a power of goodness. It is for us. The universe is for us. It is magnificent, and it is always creating. And the second stage is to unify ourselves 
with that goodness of God. We are a part of this. So therefore, the truth within me is always, is always expanding. Nothing can harm me. I am one in the safety of God's loving arms. And the third step then is like an affirmation where we claim our good in the positive, in the present. We claim it now as if it already is. And then we give thanks for it. We are in such gratitude for that which we expect now to manifest in our lives. And then we release it, we let go, and we let God. Fifth step of spiritual mind treatment or affirmative prayer. Let go and let God. The law will automatically take care of it. Automatically. Jesus spoke the words, Therefore I say to you, anything you pray for and ask, believe that you will receive it, and it will be done for you. That is a spiritual mind treatment. That is affirmative prayer. And so this is our third practice. And so for everything, to if we use these three, these three P's, these three principles, these three practices, we can move into a place of living our lives in, in a greater, fuller expression, a greater, fuller, fuller expression than we've ever experienced before just gets better and better. It's like God, it's limitless. So the good is limitless if we focus on the good. We must focus on the good. Even in, in those times, those are the times when the times seem, seem more challenging, when circumst and circumstances will happen because that's what life is, it's all contrast. That's the time to remember to pray. That's the time to remember to connect with the power of good. That's the time, more than any other time. And that will deepen your connection, your awareness with God. So let us actively then use, practice the presence, practice the principle, and practice prayer. It's all practice, all practice. Through actively using these practices, we will certainly change our experiences. We most certainly will. And the perception of our relationship with God the divine presence will also deepen. It will also deepen because it always is the more that we go within. So this is a, a really practical spirituality <coughs> that we teach here. It's very practical and I guarantee you it is user friendly. So I invite you to, oh, I to use it. Thank you.